Well, thank you for clicking on the video. Welcome back to another episode of Mayhem in the Corrals. Um, so yeah, uploaded the video this morning. I was in the middle of editing the video and I fell asleep because it was a very long night. Getting the pumps done, all the pumping that we could get done before uh, it turned cold. It's still not really cold today, but it's hovering right above freezing. So I was glad I went ahead and got all that done. And I'll tell you one thing, and I'm not afraid to own up to this, Piper Doug. I did something this afternoon that I have not done in a very, very long time. I had a nap. I had a power nap for an hour. Right at copy time, I was done. That point, and your ranchers all know the when you are having a hard time picking your feet up, yeah, you, you're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna get hurt. So, Mrs. Piper Doug, she was upstairs doing paperwork, she just turned on the camera, she looked after the place, as she always does. And uh, yeah, I just hit the couch and laid down for an hour and conked right out, got up, had a, had a tea, because I'm drinking tea right now, I don't, I'm not drinking coffee right now because, uh, not to be too uh, sherry sherry McSherry pants, but uh, I'm uh, talking to my cousin Colin and he quit drinking coffee because he was having quite bad anxiety attacks and he said it really helped. And uh, since we've been getting into up to calving season, I've been having those sort of like really racing chests, that sort of anxiety thing stop drinking coffee so i've been not i haven't been drinking coffee for two days just drinking my tea i've always been a tea drinker earl gray and it seems to be really helping so take from that what you want anyway like i said not to be too sherry mcsherry pants uh where are we at where are we at stumpers um we are at 50. Yep, within 24 hours of uploading that, well, within 12 hours of uploading that video, we're at we're at 50 cabs. Uh, four more moved over into the big pen, two over there in that pen, and a three-year-old first-timer over here, one of the family pets, had a light, nice little solid wee heifer, which is exactly how we want it. And you'll notice there's no tank in that pen. It's okay tank is over there with the youngsters they were a bit rambunctious around her and pushing and shoving her but they settled right down and they're just loving on her so it was a good move so we're watching big mark here right in the middle of the screen and superstar which is jet stars uh, one of her oldest daughters over here so there's two here that are ripe to go mark has cab before jet star has not cab before so, but I have utmost faith in these girls. So anyway, it's supper time, not just out here. And these guys are still trying to figure out where the heck everybody is. So how about her? Bedding is done, feeding is done. Oh, get caught up in some rest. Like a, it's like a that bit in Austin Powers. Evacuation, come. Evac, evacuation, come. Evacuation, complete. Ev evacuation, complete. So, if you don't believe me how complicated this fuel tank is, there's the filler neck up there. The bulk of the tank 
is there underneath that joystick and then it goes whoop and there right underneath there is the front sandwich of the tank so yeah it is an awkward shape so this was the last bucket coming out of it so i haven't run it through a strainer yet don't worry about the uh, floaters that's probably fallen off the underside of the the uh, machine it's what's at the bottom of the bucket as i'm more worried about you can kind of see a bit of grit so yeah i took a bit of half pail of diesel and ran it back through the filler to try and flush from the uh, where the spout drops into the tank down round and out see what i can get it's still pretty hard to see in there to see if there's any real nasty stuff still coming out but uh it'll be what it'll be uh don't worry about this this was actually <laughs> this was stuff that was in this bucket it was actually cattle wipe uh stuff it was in that bucket and i needed the bucket but it's been sitting here because i had actually used that stuff before it goes into one of the wipes to oil all of the chains for this so i was dipping it in that diesel and then hanging it up to drip out so i'm just straining all the bits of crud that had fallen into the bucket because i need to put that into one of those uh bowman oilers so yeah yeah one step closer okay we're at minus 20 tonight the ground is firming up lovely and solid and yeah we had four cabs on the tuesday that you watched the last video right before midnight we had another one of our old girls who will be making the transition to the retirement pen uh eddie's mum she uh she had a lovely big red and white broccoli she's never had red before odd lovely for her last cab but odd anyway i'm gonna go and do a walk around and as you remember from the last uh the last uh episode I also have to carry a lead vaccinator with my uh, flashlight now because uh, now my life's in danger more than it normally is from cows, coyotes and hybrids and other things. And it's not the kind of cougar that wears denim and listens to Shania Twain. So uh, I'll bring you back if I'm being mauled to death. Okay, I just have to film this. My phone's dying. My battery's power's dying because I've been away grabbing stuff from town. April just calved. Great big red bull calf. But look at her. That's April when she's smaller. Yes, she looks like she's in calf. She just gave birth to that monster and this is what she looks like after calving. So she will get bigger again. That's April. Just so you know, before my phone dies. Okay. Oh, we got a ruffian. Oh. Here's your mama. She's getting tail scratches. And you want head scratches. Just try not to hit me in the parts that count. So we're on the hunt. There's one little creature that's got a little bit of a dirty bum. Because I saw some signs of of a uh, little bit of little bit of runs. Not sure how serious it is yet. Haven't seen which one it is. It's obviously not that one. It's obviously not this one. Look at the stoutness of this. Mum's only a five-year-old. Yeah. You're a creature. So are you, little phoenix. Bowen phoenix. Yeah. You are always looking for a, you're looking for a bottle because you were, you were, she is the one, like, I think we're still going to lose the ear tips. Oh yeah, they're, they're just turning to jerky. But she was the one that was almost dead. 
And you know what? I think it was the uh, it was the pain medication in the heat in the hot box and a bottle as soon as Mrs. Piper Doug found her found her. That was the difference. Oh jeepers. I'm being tailed. Literally. Tripped and tailed. Okay, I gotta go and see who's where. Little jet star baby. Um hi buddy. Okay, that's Amy's kid. Gotta not be between Amy and her kid. It's Ellie's boy. That's the new one. So that's not who we're oh jeepers. Oh, bow's away. There goes his mum. No, nope, not you. I know you're good. Hi mama. Here's your baby. Bo ran out of steam. There he is. Oh, cheapers. Um, yeah, is this a little, there was one little trail over there and I want to keep ahead of this. It's kind of one of the reasons I want to get this shelter open so I can get the diatomaceous earth uh, open to them. Hello, wee sweetie. I know, I gotta get, yeah, you guys know how to trip me up. Um, I gotta get the diatomaceous earth to them as quick as possible. Hi, sweetie. Um, don't hit me. Yeah, nobody's really showing it, but it's either I bring in, it's either I bring in the uh, creek feeder and set it up as a uh, sluice so the babies can get to it, or I set this up with a bar along the front and get it into them. But I'm probably gonna have to bring the creek feeder in because they need it soon. Because I want to get ahead of this. I don't want to start seeing a lot of that poop around because as soon as you see one you will see more it's cheapy anyway so okay looks like uh zoomies have kind of ground to a halt yeah okay hey sweetie so baby number 54 was just born first timer three-year-old uh, you can't quite see her. You can just see the top of her tail head. She's up in the, she's up in the pen there. Um, we'd, we, what we're hoping not to put them in the pen as much as possible, but there's some of the, the heifers that calved last year. They're just being balloons for some reason. I don't know why. As you can see, see they're being ruckus, being rambunctious. So yeah, she was trying to lay down and squeeze the baby out and this one of them, Snuffers, kept going up and putting the head down to her and kind of nudging her and it was working her up. So I had to stand there and hold them away from her while she cabbed and then once she was bonded to the cab licking at it, I dragged the cab up into the pen because I couldn't get her to go to the pen because she thought I was panning her off and giving her in trouble so she was very nervous. So. Let her calve, let her bond, get her up in the pen, and they're doing well now, so I think the calves trying to get up, so. Oh, I tell you, it might be on the freezing side, but it is gorgeous out right now. There is not a breath of wind. So, back in here. Oops, sorry. Back in here. So, starting to get the end wall in. As that really shows you how much the ground falls away. But then again, I only eyeballed this. So this is where the house was. From there to about the about the middle. That post in the middle of the screen there. So you can kind of see it falls away from there. So yeah, we will be building that up later on. But at least this way I can just pile a bunch of bedding in there. And uh, they'll be good. Because I want to get this closed in as much as possible. And then that way, I probably told you guys all this. That way I can let the animals in and let the babies in here. Like put a railing along the front. Let the babies in here. Oh, you're just listening intently, aren't you? Let these guys in here for their diatomaceous earth. What a wee cutie. That's one of the wee boys born yesterday. It's not we. Yeah, we figured he's probably... Close to 120. His mum's not a small cow, and that's a day old cow. Cow doll by herself. If we had little uh, Phoenix, the little one that was almost frozen to death, if we had her sitting beside him, oh, you would see the difference. Anyway, so yeah, we extended the middle pen now. 
So there is, uh, we're well past halfway on the cows being calved. Um, so we haven't given them all of the middle pen yet because we like to keep a little bit of that middle pen at the bottom there because when we do get the odd cow in the big herd, when we do get one of them getting confused that they haven't calved yet and they're trying to steal, we have the capacity to shut them into the middle pen away and let them calm down and calve. So till there's not many left, we will keep that little pen at the bottom there. Anyway, yeah, like I said, take advantage of these days. It's gonna get nicer, but there's, there's a chance of snow on Saturday. Today is Thursday. Welcome to all my new subscribers. You will not regret coming to view Piper Doug and all his escapades. Him and Mrs. Piper Doug and the, the chicklets and all of this stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna get on with this. So, that is, there's one there and then there's one on the back. I don't normally carry three, but there was an odd number. Uh, that's the last of her. That's the last of the bales from the field, which is good. Uh, this time next week, they're calling for the warm up to start, and that might be it. So I don't want to be out making any more tracks like you see there. I don't want to be out here anymore. Because, uh, yeah, I don't want to be doing too much damage to the hay stand. Because you can get the bales, but you still got to get out of the field. You can't go that way because the summer road blew in. And then there's water in every direction and a fence. So you have to weave your way out. So yeah. Nice. Nice to be done. Grabbing these bales. They're, uh, once these are done, I'm hoping by that point I can get back into the silage pit. Uh, because that's the whole reason we've been using these bales predominantly for the uncapped big herd is because they're supposed to be on a lower dense feed ration so uh, that'll be the silage with the straw the three-year-old wheat straw which I'm running out of but I still have lots of three-year-old oat straw uh, so I'm gonna see how that mixes because it's a longer strand but I think it should be fine anyway I just realized my camera's kind of smoky again. Anyway. Yeah, there's lots of moisture kicking around. Okay, back to the yard. We've had no babies today so far. Oh, jeepers, we're running out of RPMs and horsepower. Um, yeah, no babies today so far, which is okay. We've uh, we've been going good a good clip this week so far. I think we're at uh, 55. 55 or 56. So yeah, let's get back to the farm. So, we're almost a month into it and our first signs of, I won't say it's coxy, but uh, a little bit messy bums. Spaceship's taken off. So, this is what we're using. White Lake Diatomaceous Earth. So, instead of going and digging out the creep feeder, was where I put it last year, out in the paddock, because uh, we weren't really up to all the tools in the tool shed to use, uh, we're doing this. So, if you can see this, it's the corner of a pen here and we turn the bale feeder upside down. That way the calves can use the, uh, the, uh, the neck slats as a way to get into that. And the mums can't quite get their heads through here to get at it. So I've got one bag in there for now just to make sure it's gonna work good. Yeah, see like that little red one in the middle there? It's not very old, but it's got a bit of a messy bum, which is a little early for if you're gonna get coxy. But it's, I don't, I don't want it to get any, I don't want this to become a thing in this pen. We had enough of it last year. Now we did, Penny, you shouldn't even be in this pen. So you have no business being a 
an old Betty. So, I want to get ahead of it. So there we go. Gonna have a bunch of little cocaine addicts running around here shortly, so that'll be nice. Yeah. So yeah, we didn't have any calves yesterday and we don't have any today yet. So yeah, bit of a bit of a rest. That's all right. Here we go. Our little cocaine addicts. Yeah, taste for it. Yep. Now that they know it's there and the rest of them see them doing it, they'll uh, start coming and going. corners trying to make some extra money to buy another bag of the stuff little baggies it's so funny when they they get a nose for them. Let's see if you can see some of them there you go <laughs> oh it's too funny especially when they get a big snort of it and they come out and they get a big puff oh there you go you just saw one there in the tub big puff that's good Hey Punisher, hey sweetie, gorgeous cab there darling, one of our own wee cows, stunner, so yeah this is one of the ones that I'm watching, like it's not that old, she's off a big, she's off a big deep creamy cow, but you see that little bit of dirt in the bum, cab's not uh, like the cab's just floppy right now, it's not sick, but I'm not taking a chance, so there's just this one, and one other one that's a little bit older. So, yeah, let's get after it. <laughs> hey man, you got, you got some more stuff, man. Well, it's a new day. Uh, it is uh, Sunday. I think it's Sunday all day. Uh, we've had two days off, no babies. No babies for two days. It's kind of slow. No, there hasn't really been a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of news. A lot of high drama. And you know what? That's okay. Because like I said earlier in the video, Piper Doug hit a bit of a wall. The old body was saying, you need to dial her back from road gear there, old guy. So yeah, a little bit of a nap. A little bit of a extra hour's sleep goes a long way. Um, so yeah, two days off, no babies. We uh, finally had a baby this morning and it's royalty. We don't have Jetstar's daughters because we've got a three-year-old Jetstar daughter having her first baby, which she's had. And a two-year-old Jetstar daughter having her first baby. She hasn't had it yet. She's not due right away, so... It all went well, so they're up in the pen. And our little Colombian drug lords are doing well, as you can see. A lot of white schnauts going on, and mums don't seem to be messing with my little setup too badly. So yeah, two calves that were medicated, they're doing well. They're uh, taking the day or two for the uh, stuff to start working, but the nice thing is any of the calves that you kind of felt were, as the Scottish would say, peely wally. Uh, you take a handful of that stuff and you hold it up to their nose and they will go crazy for it. And this goes back to conversations we've had, uh, like we've had and other channels have had, where animals will let you know what they need. Whether it's cows needing the lick tubs or whether it's calves needing this stuff. So, yeah, once they all start to get knowing and they follow each other, because they're very inquisitive little buggers. So, yeah. So, I've been running some uh, numbers, you know, it's that time of year because of uh, the government and the taxes and you start to kind of look at your numbers closely and just see how well you're doing. So, uh, a lot of people don't like to tell numbers on their channel and I'm not going to tell you like exact things about our business. It's just, no. Um, but uh, we're going to tell you the information that's valid, that's valuable to other people. 
So, uh, as far as us not growing high value corn to make silage because of the input costs, so us, we probably take a bit of a hit on the other end when it comes to pounds of gain on the calves. Now, we don't grow a lot of grain yet, and a lot of people do grow grain to feed to their calves to add pounds of gain to their calves. Um, a lot of people buy in grain or buy in complete rations to give to the calves for pounds of gain and you know that's called good luck to you um, but that's risk you're putting risk into feeding that extra income to the calves and that's all dependent on market value at the end of the day right now we're not doing it unless we can grow our own we're not going to bring it in and right now you know we're seeing what we can do with where we're at. So right at this point, we've been trying to figure out hay usage over doing silage and over growing corn. So with our alfalfa, with a bit of grass in it, because we don't have a good grass stand right now, and plus we're in a drought. Uh, currently, we are, it's about 35 cows to a bale. 1100 pounds so 1100 to 1200 pound bales is what we have right now so 35 cows to a bale is what that is so it calculates out to between 30 to 32 pounds of feed per day per cow so that's the hard numbers on what our diet is so the feed rail concept if I could do it for everybody I would because calculating what we put out versus what we see as spoilage, there's about less than 5%. I would say there's probably between 2 and 3% spoilage. You can see a little bit gets pulled out to the back. Um, but apart from that, the bales are being totally used. Uh, bales, we're getting somewhere between 5 to... At the worst case, maybe 10%, but I would say between 5 and 8, well, 5 and 7% spoilage on being dragged out. You can see around the bale feeders around, there's a ring, and it's the same with that lot there. You can make them clean up, but there's a certain amount that just gets trampled into the mud. So the feed rail is definitely the best option if you can do it. Uh, chopped feed, like a BCP, how they do it. That would be the best if we had we kind of looking at a top grinder um, because the reason for that is if you can chop it into short strands then they're not dragging as much of a mouthful out and onto the ground so whatever they pick up they're literally going to swallow and chew so but that's added cost the added cost of either the fuel and time of the top grinder or the uh, however you're going to feed it if you had some sort of a feed wagon that'd be great right now this is what we're using so it's working and going by what we marketed as far as calves at the end of last year january is when they left when we take into account what our profit margin is and pounds on calves i'm hard pressed to see why you want to go invest a lot of more risk into additives whether it's silages whether it's uh, feed supplements whether it's uh, growing extra grain i don't see the, the the added risk the added cost that's it's a it's it's a 50 50 shot to tell you the truth like i said what we're doing as far as what we feed the calves and yes we wean like lower weights than most other farms that are on full ration diets to their calves through creep feeders. We do do creep feeders, but we don't do a lot of grain, so we're not using a lot. So, like I said, each to their own. But if you are getting started and you don't have a lot of wiggle room in your operating budget for high risk, you don't have to. I know you think you're going to take a hit on the calf's weight as far as marketable uh, beef, but you don't actually have to put out as much so you're not as far into it. 
So that's kind of where I was going with this conversation. Anyway, that's a lot longer than I was meaning it to be. That's eight minutes. Sorry about that. Oh yeah, I'm still doing this. So that wall's done. I'm back over here. Oh please, way too close. Back over here. So I gotta close this wall in, close that wall in, and then once that's done, uh, I gotta make little joiners for here. Let's board this up, and then at the other end, it's a little bit wider. We talked about putting a man door. Might have said that. Uh, probably just gonna board it up for now, and then we can decide later. And then that way. I can take this wall down because I'm sick of looking at it because it looks awful. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just put a rail along the front. That way the babies can get in here. I can blow straw in. The cows won't get in here. Because I no doubt we're probably still going to get a bit of snow, you know, though it's almost April. But, uh, yeah, so... A little, little cool today, the breeze, but it's not bad in here. Hey, yeah, let's get on. I'll tell you, uh, you have no idea how much extra ballast you're carrying till you start uh, digging. That's a big battery. It's not a very big engine. Like that's only a little four cylinder Isuzu out motor. That's a 1000 cold cranking amps battery. And that's how much dirt was packed in here. So pump is in. It's just uh, sitting wired. I haven't strapped the wires or taped them or anything because I just need to, it is running. So the pump is running, the engine's not running yet, but uh, it would not charge enough to get started so i had to take the battery out and uh, trickle charge it to get it started and now it's holding a charge so i'm gonna stick it back in try and uh, see if i can get something moving tonight and if it's still not uh, holding then it looks like the battery is junk even though i ran it on the tester side of the battery charger and it says it's good but can't always trust that so Okay, you can stick it back in. So yeah, well, we've got a peanut gallery. Come up and watch me work. Okay, so. We're in. So I can't get this bottom board on because there's frozen dirt here. And anyway, that one's like right close to the ground. So I might not even put that one on. Uh, so I'm debating whether to put a piece here because I know the outside wall is going to come right to here. So I might just go with the outside wall coming right over this post. Um, so the next part, because like I said, I'm not filling the bottom in, like it's about, it's just over a foot tall in some of these spots. Once the bed's in here, it won't be a big issue. So the one big part still to do is to, uh, the bracket there and this bracket here. So I will run off of there back to here. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. It's to fill this in so I can take this wall down, but I've kind of got to undo this wall to do this, so. Yeah, that'll be a little bit fun. So I'm just gonna snack this off. Uh, I'm gonna have to run and get some more two by sixes for this one's walls, but I've got the two by eights to do the back wall of that one. So I might just go ahead and put that one up that way the lumber is up off the ground and it holds that steady as the ground starts to thaw. Cause that's the big thing is as the ground starts to thaw, this might start moving around again. Cause I know during that soft time there, this post, because I adjusted it, I had to move it around, it actually sunk by about two or three inches. So I put these boards on level. I just have to push this rafter up two or three inches before I start doing the strap work. Uh, Cause I can lift all the rest of them up. Um, but yeah, so yeah, it's kind of nice to have that done. Cause like I said, once I get these little corner pieces 
covered in and then I can just put a bar across the front and then uh, blow some straw in here. Um, so yeah, get on. beast lives again um, so yeah rinse the tank out wasn't a whole lot of crap came out of it there was some um, there is an issue still an issue with this because uh, I did notice that when the fuel was getting lower down on the uh, gauge this would start to act up now what I'm starting to think that might have been was as the old pump was starting to uh, sort of choke out, as soon as there wasn't as much fuel in here pushing it out the bottom and along, that might be why it was starting to uh, wimp out. So now with that new facet pump in there, I'm hoping that should be that remedied. We will see, we will test the theory. This will not be going too far from home. But, for all intents and purposes, that is that. So, what's next? Um, well, uh, let's see if I can do this one hand. Okay, new air filters in there, but we have a problem. These are the Wix replacements. So, Wix replacement for this, because this is a Napa filter. Uh, problem being is I can't get the lid to snap lock shut and it's a very, they're very chintzy. These lids are not great. So I don't know how I'm going to get that to shut. I might have to uh, ratchet strap it somehow. Come up with some sort of a Jimmy Rig Piper Doug fix. Uh, I got to drop the belly pan out because I need to drop the oil out of this. Do the oil change. Uh... The hydraulic, main hydraulic filter is this one here. And the inline hydraulic filter is the cartridge there. And the engine oil filter is there. So that's what I'm going to be doing. But for now, that's the end of the video. I'm going to thank you all for watching. Um, much appreciated. I do uh, like making these videos. I see my subscriber count is slowly climbing and that is good. Like I said, I, uh, I am very happy with uh, people watching the video, as many people as there is, and uh, the more subscribers, the better. It is currently minus 25 outside, so it's not great. Uh, two days from now, it's supposed to be zero. Yeah, that's how crazy it is around here. Um, and yeah, building work is going on with the shelters. Hopefully that's going to keep going. In the next video, you're probably going to see this thing getting taken out. Um, because we're probably going to try and start getting these drains going if it's going to stay mild. So that's going to be fun. Have to haul some water. But, outside of that, uh, I can't even remember what all we filmed this week. <laughs> so yeah, look forward to warmer weather. Hope you're all safe and sound. And uh, I think everybody who's in cattle will be pretty well straight calving now. So uh, everybody be safe out there. See you next week, everybody. Teddy, bye.